Hello, it's Janet, your friendly biochem professor again. Today we are going to talk about pedigrees, okay? So, this is the chart that I really like to use to break things down. Not only is it picture, but it also has kind of a fun little definition. Okay, so for autosomal recessive, we're going to have two unaffected parents, tends to skip generations, and they have an affected child. Okay, sex-linked recessive, again, it's going to skip a generation. You're going to have... Um, it, it affect males more than females, and then they can also be carriers. Dominants show up every generation to an affected parents have an affected child, and then also sex link dominant is where it tends to show up in every generation. Males pass it on to their daughters and none of their sons. All right, so first let's talk about what makes something dominant versus recessive. So we have our big letters and we have our little letters. Okay, so I always like to say that the big letters, they're kind of our bullies. Okay, and why I say that is because you can have a a and it's going to express the dominant. You can have a little a still going to express the dominant. But in order to get a recessive condition, you have to have two copies of the little a to get it to express the recessive. So this is why things tend to skip generations. Okay, so when we take a look at pedigrees, the first thing that I like to determine is whether or not it's going to be dominant or recessive. Okay, so by doing that, we're going to be able to kind of eliminate half, right? So we're going to look to see if a kid has it and the parents do not. Okay, so for this one, we see, oh, I look at pedigrees from the bottom up too. Don't ask me why it works, but it really works to see kind of the whole picture. So we can say, okay, look, we have a kid that has it, a parent that has it. Okay, so that's more than likely going to be dominant. This family doesn't have it. This child or female number seven doesn't have it. Okay, so again, by looking at the kid that has it, parent that has it, and then also parent that has it and three kids that have it, this is going to be a dominant trait. Okay, and so... Um, this one is going to be autosomal dominant because of that, okay? So we have a parent that has it, and it has a kid, so it's dominant, and it's not sex-linked, it's not affecting just one, gen one gender, and so it's going to be autosomal dominant, okay? With this one, you see, wow, it happens to skip this whole second generation, and so that's pretty obvious that it's going to be a recessive condition, okay? But when you look at just the parents, these two kids have it, but the parents do not, okay? So that right there shows you that is going to be a recessive trait, okay? And then also, it's affecting both males and females, so this is going to be autosomal recessive. When we look at the third pedigree, okay, this one, look, the, if we look at the bottom again, we don't have the parents that have it, but the kids have it. Okay, we have a kid that has it, the parents do not. Okay, so again, that's going to tell you that it's going to be recessive. Okay, and then look, this one happens to affect only males. So that one's going to be X-linked recessive. All right, and then when we go on to this one, we can say, okay, wow, every single generation have it. The kids has it, the parent has it. The kid has it, the parent has it. Kid has it, the parent has it, etc. So that one is going to be dominant. Okay, and then this one, you can see that the male is passing it on to his female daughters. Okay, so if we go back up to sex link dominant, it tends to show up in every generation. Males tend to pass it on to their daughters and none of their sons. So we can see that the male is passing it on to the daughters, male is passing it on to the daughter. Okay, so that is why that one is going to be X linked dominant. So I hope that was a little bit helpful for pedigrees, and let me know. Um, have fun studying. Bye-bye.